tahminime geçiyorum. Hi Sanya. I I can see some friends from the journal. Good morning Sanya. Good morning everyone, dear colleagues and the participants from not only faculty of fisheries like a university but also other countries. We have very well-known scientists and distinguished professor, Professor Dr. Wojtek Piaseczki today to give and to deliver an excellent conference for us about his journal, past and uh, present status and the uh, status of the archaeology at Scotaria. So. But before we start his a speech. I would like to introduce him uh, to you by saying several words and sentences. Uh, Professor Dr. Wojtek Piaseczki uh, got his graduate degree from Faculty of Marine Fisheries and Food Technology, Agricultural University of uh, Shitekin. Uh, uh, majoring in ethology, management, and protection of the aquatic resources in 1981. Quite a long time ago, by the way. In 1987, he got his PhD, and then uh, another position, evaluation, which we are not familiar to in Turkey, but it is a higher degree than the PhD. Uh, in 19, 2009, he earned the academic title of professor in biological science. He completed two postdoctoral fellowships, one in the United States at the Pacific side, California, a Smithsonian Institute, another one uh, from Canada, a, absolutely other side of the ocean, Atlantic Ocean, New Brunswick. Uh, he also worked in many countries like Germany, Namibia. He spent six months in uh, Namibia uh, at the Polish research vessel. Uh, maybe 25 years ago or almost, yes, quite two decades ago. His research focused on parasitology and pathology of aquatic organisms, mainly fishes. And his favorite systematic group were parasitic crustaceans. He is an editor in chief of an international scientific journal. All of us know very well, we show quite good interest in that journal, Acteitiologia Episcoteria. Now it's, uh, the journal is in another form, Acteitiologia Episcoteria Penso. In 1980, uh, he worked, as I said earlier, six months at the research vessel in Namibia, in African coast. And he spent 30 years in the agricultural university in Poland, Szczecin again. And within 1996 and 2002, he was a deputy dean of the faculty, and he also worked as a head of the department and many positions. Now he works at the University of Szczecin, again, Institute of Marine and Environmental Sciences. He's teaching courses related to fish disease, parasitology, ecology, uh, and also for 11 years, medical parasitology in English at the the Pomeranian Medical University. Now, the floor is uh, Professor Dr. Wojtek Piaseczki, but before he starts, please switch off all the microphone and the VE cameras uh, to get his voice in a clear way. Thank you so much. Floor is yours, Mr. Wojtek. Thank you for your introduction. And uh, I would like to also add that I have a very close ties to Turkey because my daughter Olga and my son-in-law, they worked eight years in Turkey 
uh, one year in Bilkent University in Ankara and seven years in Istanbul. And I visited them many times and actually I have quite emotional and positive attitude to your country. And uh, recently I've, I started also to pick up different words that we have in our language which were borrowed from Turkish. So we have historical ties and uh, our countries affected each other uh, in different ways. But now it's time to go to my presentation. So welcome everybody. And I'm not sure if you can see uh, if you can see uh, the slide. Is it visible? Yes, very clear. OK, so this presentation was prepared uh, by me in conjunction with uh, Eva uh, Kostadinova from Pensoft, uh, especially the, uh, the later part uh, it was prepared by Eva. So I would like to thank you and say that I appreciate this. Perhaps people from Pensoft will also join us uh, to answer to answer some difficult questions. And now I would like to tell you something more about the journal Acta Ichthyologica at Piscatoria, or Acta Ichthyologica at Piscatoria, depending on the pronunciation. Uh, so what, what is really important? Uh, some scientific journals, they just appear, they start uh, the activity just just from nowhere. And I, I would like to tell you about the origin, about the genesis of the journal, because uh, uh, its origin is very closely related uh, to, uh, to the history, to the history of Poland and the history of, um, of uh, Polish fisheries. Uh, so first of all, I would like to start from, uh, from the time when the Second, Second World War ended and uh, if you can see the map, as a consequence of the Second World War, uh, Poland, uh, pre-war uh, pre Poland, which is yellow here, was actually, uh, was actually Stalin decided to move Poland westwards. So as a consequence, we, we received new borders um, on the expense of uh, former German territories. Uh, and what is, what is important for Polish fisheries is that before the war, uh, we had difficulties in accessing the sea uh, because after the First World War, uh, uh, the uh, free state of free city of Gdańsk or Danzig uh, was just a free city, so we could not use this uh, accessing the sea. So Poland Authority decided to build a new city called Gdynia, very close to Gdańsk. But anyway, before the war, the coastline was just 70 kilometers or something. And after the war, it was more than 500 kilometers. And uh, we also received, we received not only seaco uh, this long uh, sea coast, but we also received important uh, marine ports like Szczecin. So it's in the northwestern part of Poland, the city, the city of Szczecin, and also other smaller ports like Kołobrzeg, Ustka, Weba. And uh, this is a great occasion. This is a great opportunity of having those ports and unlimited access to the sea to build up um, to build up Polish fisheries. And since actually the end of 1940s, we witnessed unprecedented expansion of Polish shipyard industry. Uh, so the reason for this was just um, agreements with within the former Soviet bloc, so-called Skomekon. Uh, so the Soviet Union decided that Poland should specialize in building ships, uh, but we did only the merchant ships and fisheries ships and the research ships, but the Soviet Union uh, kept uh, 
naval vessels, war uh, ships for itself. So as a consequence, in 1940, uh, in 1964, Poland was declared uh, the second after Japan in building fisheries vessels. But it, it wasn't just communist propaganda. It was published in some influential um, British magazine, 1954. And uh, the size, uh, we, fo we focused not only on the Baltic Sea, um, so the plans were more serious and uh, the fisheries vessels built were bigger and bigger and bigger. The one actually I, I sailed in Namibia was 80 meters long and with 80 people crew. That's quite, that's quite impressive. And um, I believe there were also some fisheries vessels that were 100 meters in length. Um, since people are waiting in the lobby, Vardat, so can you allow them? Are they? Okay, they will. Are actually my colleague Tefik Jehan is supporting us uh, okay, great. technically. Tefik, some people are waiting to. Just okay, okay, don't worry. Go. You can continue. Uh, okay. We so in the 1950s and in the, in, in the 1960s, uh, Poland actually created three huge fisheries companies, Dalmor, Griff and Odra, and they were intended uh, to operate elsewhere in the different oceans. And uh, those three companies employed uh, about 12,000 fishermen, or perhaps not only fishermen, but also uh, navigation personnel, uh, fish processing personnel, and uh, etc. etc. But the entire crew was about 12,000 people. And on the beginning of the 1970s, we observed a global expansion. So it was shortly before imposing those uh, limited economic zones. Uh, so we actually, we were everywhere. And uh, such, a, such an unprecedented development of Polish fisheries needed some education. So obviously the government started with uh, trade schools, um, technical, technical schools, but uh, they also established um, university faculties. Uh, initially it was in the city, in the city, eastern city of Olsztyn, and then uh, this faculty split it in two, and inland fishery stayed in Olsztyn, uh, while the marine fisheries migrated to Szczecin, where I live, where I was born. And so this development of fisheries education, uh, university level fisheries education, uh, resulted in increasing the potential of Polish fisheries research. Uh, we also, we, we could use Dalmor, Griff and other fisheries, fishing vessels to collect us uh, to collect material for the study. And there was also one, uh, one uh, or perhaps three uh, research vessels dedicated to uh, fisheries. And so as a result, in the wake of those successes that I mentioned, of Polish fisheries, uh, Acta Ichthyologica Piscatoria was funded in 1970. Uh, the beginning was really simple because we had this, this uh, research series of journals uh, called Zeszyty Naukowe, and everything was published in Polish, unfortunately. And the, initiative, uh, and the initiative with ACTA was that from the beginning it should be published in English. And the person responsible for this was Professor Eugeniusz Grabda. Professor Eugeniusz Grabda, and he was backed by his wife, uh, Dr. Jadwiga Grabda. Uh, Professor Eugeniusz Grabda was, uh, was a famous zoologist. Uh, he published 
um, textbooks, many textbooks for zoology. And Jadwiga Grabda, she published a very interesting book about uh, marine parasitology. Marine parasitology or fish parasitology, this book was later translated into English. And she specialized in parasitic copepods. And um, Professor Grabda and his wife were known that they established so-called Polish School of Marine Parasitology. So they, they initiated this and started research by themselves. And if you go to the December issue of ACTA in the back cover, there is a short like one page a note about Professor, Professor Grabda. Uh, so this is the first, this is the cover of the first issue published in 1970. And at that time, it was just a series in a larger, in a larger journal named Zeszyty Naukowe. So there were there was a different series about animal husbandry, agriculture, uh, economics, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And one of the series was fisheries. And Professor Grabda proposed the name Acta Ichthyologica Piscatoria. And even even though this cover looks very Polish, so inside there were only there were only English papers. And surprisingly, I don't know the details, but this is 1970. In the 1971, nothing happened. Nothing happened. And the second publication was only 1972, uh, volume two. And this is the cover that actually persisted for, for decades. Not really nice. On the beginning, there were problems, printing problems. It was printed just on regular paper, uh, so the quality of print was not really good. Um, so it was a very good idea to publish this English journal because uh, our library could send this journal to different institutions in Europe and also elsewhere in the world to the Institute uh, specializing institutes specializing in fisheries and they did and as an exchange they received a large number of a large number of uh, foreign publications at that time it was time of the iron curtain and hard currency limitations so our library could not afford to buy anything from abroad and fortunately, this library exchange worked because in the in the early 1970s, it was before this unprecedented movement of uh, of uh, publishers of Western publishers who actually acquired point by point they acquired all available journals like Elsevier, Wiley, etc. So it was before. So those institutions who uh, which published those journals could actually freely exchange those. Uh, as a result, we received international citations uh, of our publications, and I think this later contributed uh, to, uh, to our to being promoted to journal citation reports and receiving impact uh, the impact factor. Uh, so uh, uh, the profession of uh, fishermen uh, had a really good publicity at that time, as you can see on a coin, five zloty coin, there is a fisherman and another fisherman is on a 50 zloty uh, bill. Okay, my six months in Namibia, but it wasn't, it wasn't a research vessel. Um, it was just an occasion to collect some materials, and I was really employed as a junior fisherman. Okay, I need to mention my associate, because this journal, basically, I'm a fish parasitologist, so, uh, so the majority of merit decisions are based on the decision on the help of uh, associate editors, and they specialize, specialize in different fields of science, Eva de Croo, 
from Belgium, Ronald Fricke from Germany, Paraskevi Karachle from Greece, Yolanta Kiupinska, Poland, Jan Kotus, Poland, Ken Longnecker from the US, uh, Kasi Marimutu, Malaysia, Sanya, uh, Matic Skokos, Croatia, Alexey Orwa from Russia, Filipe Ottoni, uh, he recently joined us from Brazil, Mirosław Przybylski from Poland, Rodolfo Reyes from the Philippines, Prezak Simonovic from Serbia, Adnan Tokac from Izmir, Turkey, and Yekaterina Vasilieva from Russia. I highlighted a yellow Polish editors, so as you can see, uh, the journal is mostly international, only three Polish editors, but I'm um, uh, so it doesn't matter, actually the country doesn't matter, it uh, merit aspects of those people matter and I really appreciate that they do a really great job for us, but uh, suddenly only one, one, uh, one editor is from Turkey, Adnan Tokac. Uh, so you're welcome to so if, if somebody would like to be an editor or a board member, uh, so you are welcome to just send me an email. And former editors, I also need to give some tribute to those people. The founder editor, Eugeniusz Grabda, Ludmiła Stodolnik, the second, uh, the second chief editor, George Benz, uh, unfortunately he died uh, for some health complications, Murat Bilajanolu, also was an editor, very hardworking. Christian Kapape, Patrice Francoeur, also he's no longer with us. But Barbara Novak from Australia, Teresa Rajevska, Arun Kumar Ray from India, uh, Kosta Stergiu from Greece, Lucian Tomasik. Uh, he he's uh, he's also not not longer with us. But they don't have his picture. Um is Cikliras, Jacek Wolnicki, and that's it for former editors. Uh, so I started my editorial career actually 19 years ago, but um, a few years before that time, I was helping Professor Stodolnik uh, in English editing, so my experience is longer. And when I began, uh, when I became editor in chief, actually I ordered all, all issues to be scanned and digitized, and uh, all actually, all actually articles they have a DOI identifiers. Uh, here is an example of of uh, of a summary page. Uh, the, the, this one is so-called DOI response page, because if you uh, type DOI, it actually should uh, connect to this, uh, this page, not directly to um, the paper. And so on the bottom, there is a DOI. We had, we had our prefix. And now, since January 1st, 2021, we have a new publisher, which is Pensoft. And I'm still tolerated as uh, the editor-in-chief. And a few words about Pensoft. Uh, it's a commercial publisher, but not uh, it's difficult to compare it with Elsevier or Wiley uh, because it was founded by scientists for scientists. So the attitude of Pensoft is totally different than the attitude of Elsevier. So it's not only profit, it's just, uh, just helping scientists to publish books and journals. Uh, the, the, the head of Pensoft is uh, Professor Lubomir Penev from Bulgaria. I was trying to count how many journals they have, and according to different sources, is between 60 and 43. And I think they they own 
43 journals, but they publish more on the request of other uh, journal owners. Uh, so since the beginning, they, they published uh, more than 1,000 scientific books, and they are focusing now on different uh, computer tools to enhance the work of scientific work. The most important one is Arfa publishing platform. This is just electronic submission system, like uh, editorial system, something similar. But uh, this is one of the unique uh, submission platforms that actually provides the service uh, to the publisher and to authors from the beginning till the end, because uh, ARF also includes uh, the, the stage of uh, production. Uh, Pens of markup tool. I am quite new, so I am I feel not really competent to explain everything that it's uh, here, like Alpha writing tool, Pens of taxon profile, a refined it, annotator, open biodiversity, Pens of the wiki converter. Well, I am not really competent to explain all this. I am over. I am simply overwhelmed. And if you compare, if you compare the all the journal that I actually, uh, I was. I was the only person before, and right now there is a, a team, hardworking and competent team of people who actually contribute to to the high quality of the publishing. Um, okay, so why publish in ACTA? Uh, so. We have we have no doubts that the journal is re internationally recognized. Uh, it has a legacy in the field of ichthyology, and the team of the editors and and board members is also renowned internationally. And we have authors from over eighty countries spanning all continents. And what is very important, the journal is indexed in over 40 international indexers and archivers, including Web of Science, Scopus, and related uh, databases like SJR and uh, DOAJ. And here's the list of countries. As you can see, the majority of submitted articles were I'm not sure if they counted submitted or published. Uh, Turkey is on the first place, followed closely by Poland, India, France, Mexico, Germany, Greece, Spain, Brazil, and Italy, and Tunisia. Uh, uh, different parameters uh, that you could actually calculate that are calculated. Uh, they obviously change every year, and uh, last year we had a slight de decrease in uh, the journal impact factor, which is uh, 0 0.629, and in the Scopus site score is 1.1, 1 .1. Uh, H index 20, average citations per item 4.71, and uh, in this uh, in this Scopus score, we uh, we are in the quartile number three, and this is something which is important. Our over our overall number of citations, uh, so 560 citations, age index 20, uh, sums of cited uh, 26. 2600, but those figures do not do not translate directly into those important parameters that I mentioned. Uh, so we have now New Year. So on this graph, you can see that the number of total sites decreased, but I think by the end of by the end of the year, they will be on a higher level than last year. And here I would like to present our top cited articles.
The first one is by Rainer Freze, uh, Thanasis Cicliras and Costa Stergio, editorial note on weight length relations of fishes, cited 252 times. And I believe that you can read the next titles. Uh, Dr. Mondal, the second one, and the third one, Dr. Gosh, uh, he's now one of our board members. And also Murad Bilajanolo is on the fifth position uh, with uh, Dr. Jijek. Okay, so our impact factor. So it actually fluctuates, fluctuates, and I hope that next year will be higher. So here's full list of our impact factors. So in the beginning it was uh, lower than 0 0.5, and the highest one was 0 0.7, quite high. And so last year was a slight drop in this number. And in the Web of Science, uh, this journal is, is listed is actually listed in two categories, in the fisheries and in zoology. So in fisheries, there is only 53 papers, and ACTA, as you can see, is on the 44th position. And before us is Ecological Research, Iranian Journal of Fisheries and Science, Latin American Journal of Aquatic uh, Research, and North American Journal of Aquaculture, and also Turkish Journal of Fisheries and Aquaculture, <laughs> I believe. <clears throat> And in zoology, uh, there is a total uh, there is a total of more than 160 papers, and I think uh, the competition is really difficult. We are on the positive 140 position here. And this slide, why to publish in ACTA? This slide gives some gives us some hope because uh, two days ago I actually browse the web of science and um, I actually selected only papers from uh, 2018 and 2019 and a total of those papers is uh, 100, 111 and those papers were cited 158 times. This actually gives some good hope as for our new, new impact factor. <coughs> and I also actually printed those best cited uh, papers which were published in uh, 2018 and 2019. Uh, so th these are top papers and um, um, uh, Turkish, Turkish authors cited 17 times within the two years. And finally, Scopus. Scopus uh, cited documents, uncited documents. So this proportion is growing from one year to the other, and we are going up and up and up. And uh, total sites and self sites, I've been trying to limit the number of self citations because if the, this number increases too much, uh, a journal can lose the impact factor. Uh, citations per document. Uh, so the most important is uh, the blue one, uh, which is two years. Uh, it's it's comparable to the impact factor. So the value is also comparable to the impact factor. And similarly, like web in the web of science, it dropped uh, a little bit last year. International collaboration. This is another parameter which is quite important. And uh, they uh, they count papers that uh, actually uh, were produced by international teams, not only from one country, but from more than one country. And finally, the most important parameters, this is a quite difficult algorithm, SJR uh, of, uh, of this uh, database. Uh, as, and you can see that it is also growing in recent two years. Unfortunately, there was a decline, a little bit decline. And quart quartiles, 
number four, number three, and I think now it, it is time for number two. Uh, so why publish in uh, in Acta? So what actually changed is the charge, because until recently, Polish Ministry of Higher Education covered all costs of the journal production, and right now they do not give any money to any journal. Uh, so that's why Pensoft agreed to publish us. But obviously, uh, they do not receive any subsidies, to, so the costs of production must be covered by uh, our authors in the in the form of uh, APCs, which is uh, uh, article processing charge. And, and if we compare those charges, they are much, much lower than in competitors. The Western journals, they usually have about 2,000 uh, 2, euro a charge and here is 550 uh, euro only for an article which is uh, from 1 to 20 published pages and unfortunately there is no there is no discount for there is no discount for short communications but we need to remember that the amount of money the amount of effort and time invested in a, a shorter journal is comparable to the amount of of uh, work invested in a bigger journal, uh, in a bigger paper. Uh, so this is uh, this interface page alpha. It is very easy to submit a paper, uh, to register and submit a paper. This is one of the best uh, electronic journal submission systems. Professor Penef believes that actually alpha is the best in the world. Uh, so in in the majority of features it really is, but uh, I cannot actually speculate on the details because uh, it will take me some time to to learn uh, all the tricks. Uh, so the entire production process within Arfa, uh, so it's quite unusual because other journal journal submission systems do not have the uh, the production module and it sends obviously self uh, auto notes to everybody involved. Uh, customer suppo support, uh, there is a very well prepared manual how to proceed and what is very important on the left hand side in this manual you see a list of content uh, and this list of content often bifurcates and you can really find what you need. You just click and it, the Mio manual takes you there where you need. Uh, there is a live customer support from Pensoft Editorial Office. Uh, Boriana Ovcharova is the managing editor and you can always ask her a question. And you just simply upload and click and everything is saved. Uh, and now quite a new feature from Arfa. This is Arfa preprints. Uh, this is this is becoming increasingly important. We did not have this in the past, and uh, major journals like from Elsevier they already have this. Um, because yesterday I received a notification about my own paper from Elsevier that uh, it has a preprint already. Uh, this is quite convenient, especially if you need to demonstrate that you submit it and uh, you need to demonstrate the stage of the submission. It's quite useful. So you just uh, so on the on the stage of submission uh, of submitting a paper, you just you just click yes, and in the future you will after pre-evaluation you will receive uh, the system will produce a preprint. And, and DOI identifier also. Wojtek, sorry to interrupt you. We have already spent 40 minutes. We are flexible, by the way, no yeah, problem. I, I'm but, almost finished, I am almost finished. Yes, just uh, to remind participants, we can get uh, questions 
uh, at the end of the presentation. So we can continue. No yes, yes. OK, thank you. I will try to finish quite soon. So this is an example of a preprint. You just click and download a PDF and uh, the DOI is automatically generated. And if the paper is rejected, the DOI is also removed. Uh, so here is the workflow for preprints, and it is the same as everywhere else. And uh, this is quite important, three formats of the publication. Traditional PDF, which you, you well know, and two others, semantically enhanced HTML. This is an excellent feature because this, is, this actually uses well the options of the internet of computer and also machine readable XML to talk with databases. So you click something like you, uh, you click on a taxon and the taxon appears on the right hand side and you can get additional information, the additional links about the taxon. You also click here on the coordinates, you click on the coordinates and a map appears on the right hand side showing you actually where they did uh, the study and also uh, and also individual illustrations may also have individual DOIs and you, you click on the on the DOI and you see the map or other figure and finally for references you click on the reference you see the full record which is which is included in the published paper and you also uh, the, the program refined it appears and you, it shows you also other options to check it out and this xml is really important uh, xml version of the jar of the article because it automatically talks to robots actually browsing the the content of the internet and those robots actually are browsing the content of the internet. And if there is the XML file, it is very easily converted and uh, imported to different uh, def different databases. You see a full list of those databases that it's not all. Uh, and cited, there is also another feature, cited by records display. Uh, so how many views of the article here and and so on and so on and uh, social media also twitter facebook this is also quite important because younger people increasingly focus on uh, on social media uh, okay so that's it that's it for today from my side and I, I will be happy to answer some questions. Okay, thank you so much. I indeed would like to express my sincere thanks to of Wojtek because he was vaccinated yesterday, yesterday and he has delivered his uh, conference for us today. Uh, so thank you so much. I will not spend too much time, just uh, I want to give the floor to, not the floor actually, we can get questions, then I can uh, convey the questions of participants to you. If there is any question, our technical supporter, uh, Mr. Tefik, will let me know. Until then, I can ask my question. Uh, so, to publish an article in your journal, uh, we have to pay anymore. So do you think it will decrease the number of Turkish scientists uh, who is willing to publish in your journal? Uh, we have seen from the graph that Turkish is number one uh, before the po Polish people. So we show really quite good interest in your journal. What do you think about this? And the second question I have, we have been to your house in 2015 with the, our uh, colleague, well-known colleague, Ms. Prof. 
Harold Rosenthal and you, two editors of well-known journals. So you were talking about the blacklist uh, of the editors, some behavior of the some of the authors, uh, which I found very interesting. Uh, as an outside of that area, you're, you're the editors. I'm sure you're facing many difficult situations and uh, cases. Uh, what do you suggest to young or newcomer researchers who is trying to publish their first article in a journal? So when they get rejection from one of the journal, some of them are trying other journal without revising uh, his or her paper. And uh, some uh, improve the paper and send to other journal. What is your suggestion about this? Okay, so actually I can see, I can see here uh, two questions. So the first questions are article processing charges. So previously we did not charge anybody for anything. And uh, as a consequence, our list of authors will change. So because some of authors decided to submit their paper because they simply had no money. But if you read the acknowledgments at the end of uh, each, uh, each article, you can see that they acknowledge uh, financing of some uh, research grant of two or research grants. So it means that there is some money involved. But obviously under, you understand that some of the uh, research grants may be not enough to cover the costs of publication. Uh, but uh, I think so the, uh, the list of our authors will slightly change. So we are definitely going to lose those who could not afford to pay, but hopefully we'll, we'll gain uh, some more authors who will be attracted by those additional features of the modern journal because um, I did not realize that, but uh, only after joining Pensoft, I can see how uh, how old fashioned um, I was running the journal. <laughs> so I can see all those new new features. And uh, so the second question, um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned Harold Rosenthal. He recently wrote me a letter. Uh, so he, he always supports the journal, but unfortunately he had to abandon uh, his uh, his journal uh, for, for give it to some other colleague from Germany. Uh, so I also really enjoyed the time spent that, that you visited us in our, in our house. And uh, the next question is about uh, new um, young researchers trying to uh, be successful in publishing a paper. So what is quite important? Uh, your comment was quite. Uh, so quite good that many young researchers that get their paper rejected from somewhere else and what they do, they do nothing. They just submit exactly the same paper to a new journal. And I think um, if we are rejected, so this is a great chance for us to improve the paper. So in merit terms, yes. And the other thing is that if the formal quality of the submit, submitted paper is really bad, so it gives it provides some bad uh, bad information about the author. So if you cannot actually adjust the format, style and format of your submission to what we have, so it means that your attitude is uh, negative, or you it it may also mean that the quality of your research is uh, is is uh, not not enough to be published in an international journal. So this is quite important to submit a perfect quality uh, of a manuscript in terms of the style and format. And I would like to focus also on the illustrations, on the figures. I've been doing this uh, for many years. Uh, trying to to ask the authors to provide very good quality and i focused on i demanded uh, like vector graphics 
figures right now i'm i'm not doing this so this is a good message for everybody i if you can do a good quality of figure like you know jpeg or tiff it's also acceptable not only vector graphics but uh, we need to remember that this is really good news yeah so this is <laughs> very good news so you need to remember that our future vector graphics is our future so i remember like 20 years ago some people complained okay but i can send you this paper uh, this uh, article on paper because i don't know how to operate a computer and but you know nobody says you know uh, i cannot write this article because i am illiterate right so image processing is also kind of literacy that quite soon we need to we will need to master for our sake uh, okay so that would be it uh, any other questions thanks a lot uh, i think see, because we are at the last working day in turkey before we'll be fully locked down for 50, 17 days. So this is the oh. last working day in Turkey. Uh, some of the colleagues maybe have already left uh, to their second house, to their house. Uh, I personally uh, surprised, a little bit surprised because of uh, the number of participants i was hoping to get more but uh, some others joining and following us uh, through the youtube uh, i would like to express my sincere thanks professor dr wojtek piasecki who has been to turkey uh, to our faculty under the teaching mobility staff of erasmus program several years ago i think if I remember correctly, 2013, he has delivered several lectures. Now, unfortunately, virtually, he delivered his speech. I really hope next time we host him physically in Turkey. I would like to see him in Turkey. He's a friend of Turkish, he's a friend of us. So we will continue to publish in, in his journal. I hope, and we got a very good news from him. We will not suffer anymore to prepare uh, best quality maps or graphs, uh, which was not uh, easy indeed. So thank you so much, uh, Mr. Wojtek. Uh, I'll give you the floor for your last words. Thanks a lot for joining us today. So thank you very much. It was my pleasure that I could actually present this uh, short, uh, short lecture to you. Uh, and I hope as a result of my presentation, there will, we will have much more, uh, many more submissions from Turkey. And I would like, I would like also to encourage people from the Ege University to become our board members and especially, and especially uh, subject editors. In the old journal, it was associate editor, and in Pensoft, it is subject editor. But anyway, it's it's basically the same. And uh, the advantage in the new system for subject editors is that their name actually appears on each article, so so they are they are receiving credit for publishing uh, for um, for processing processing. The submitted paper, and they also take the responsibility of what is published. So it's not not longer anonymous. Uh, dear Wojtek and dear Voyager, may may I just say a word? Yes, yes, please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon or good morning to everybody. Uh, dear Voyager, it's a really pleasure to <laughs> meet you at least on uh, this way. I want uh, to thank you for your uh, time and effort you invest in everyday work uh, for Acta Archaeologica and Piscatoria. 
and uh, I, I, I don't know what to say. During all these uh, years working with Wojciech, I have to highlight that I never work with such a dedicated editor to the journal. Usually, uh, my uh, working with editors means that I uh, wait for response for a day, sometimes even for days. And with Wojciech, uh, the response uh, rate is really in the second. So I really appreciate that. And I uh, also want to say that uh, each problem or each issue is always uh, very openly discussed with all editors, uh, which is also something that uh, I really appreciate. So I really think that you work a great job and I think and I hope that uh, in now with new publisher everything will uh, uh, be the same. I also have one question when we will start working on a new platform. Please. Excuse me. Uh, sorry, you didn't hear me. I just want to ask when we will start to work on a new platform. So the new the new platform is is ready now. So if uh -huh. uh, so we if there is some submission uh, suitable for your uh, uh, experience, so I will just assign it to you in the new okay. system. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you once again. So we have, I need to mention that we have uh, almost 40 old papers from the old system. Uh, they will be published this year. Uh, like 38 accepted papers. And I want to right. convey the regards of Pedrak Simonovic, Dr. Pedrak Simonovic, uh, Dr. Talat Yenek, and uh, our head of department, Dr. Akin Ikias, sends his uh, regards to you. And if there is any other questions, we can get. Otherwise, uh, we have to say once again, thanks and uh, bye to Prof. Dr. Wojtek Pesecki. I hope okay. next okay. time Oh, the Zafer is asking question. Okay, Zafer, please go ahead. Hello, everybody. Uh, Professor Piaseski, thank you very much for your fruitful presentation and uh, suggestions for us. Uh, you mentioned about two notices. One of them is uh, very strict rules about uh, instructions. Your uh, journal. Uh, I have uh, a few uh, published papers in your journal. I am not a uh, correspondent author, but honestly, I want to say that uh, some uh, correspondent others of uh, of my uh, published papers complain about the uh, rules. Uh, they are very strict, uh, very difficult. Uh, Maybe if any chance to uh, simplify these uh, rules. Uh, uh, the other question is, uh, is there any plan or idea or actions increase the impact factor of the journal? Okay, good, yes, good question. But the first one has already been replied, I think. It will be easier, of course. Okay, yeah, okay so please. Uh, actually, I could not hear everything because Eruptions in, in voice, so Vardati, if you could summarize. Okay. The, the first one was about the, is there any possibility to uh, make easier the rules and the, for instance, the graph and vector graphs and map pre preparation was very difficult uh, at the past. So one of his uh, corresponding author of uh, Zafar uh, suffered a lot to pay, prepare a map for instance, for your journal, for the article. He is also co-author of that article. So the question is, uh, is it going to be easier? The second one uh, is uh, increasing the impact factor. Any plan for that? Uh, so the, the, <laughs> the question about the impact factor is not easy. As I mentioned before, when I look at the citations in the uh, in uh, and 2018 and 2019, it looks the, the, like 
the number of uh, citations, uh, the, the impact factor will increase some, uh, substantially. So what we can do to do this? And I think I need to mobilize uh, associate uh, subject editors that are, that are, so they could actually submit uh, their own their own articles which have have chances for uh, good citations so this is my idea and if we have more associate editors uh, the chances will probably increase and i think all bo board members um, some board members are so busy that they don't have time to read uh, the the list of papers in the journal because if they do uh, sometimes in their own papers they could they could cite our journal, but if they don't browse the uh, the list of contents, uh, it would be uh, difficult. So unfortunately, so this is uh, this is not up to me. This is up to everybody in the journal. Uh, so I can see some. Another question from Miroslav. Sorry, this is a typical Polish name, not easy to pronounce for anyone uh, abroad the Poland uh, border. Um, just as an associate uh, editor, I wish to say something, uh, perhaps uh, something which uh, is dedicated to younger scientists. Uh, from my uh, point of view, uh, I always pay attention if this uh, submitted material is by younger or by older experienced author. If there is the first uh, situation, I usually try to uh, put more effort uh, dedicated uh, to authors how to improve uh, statistical analysis or perhaps, uh, uh, let me say, design of, uh, of, of, of paper. So we, we are really pay attention for that. Uh, however, uh, it is necessary to remember that the value of this uh, uh, journal is, uh, let me say, uh, something in both hands, I mean from editorial and also from the authors. Uh, so uh, the first of all, I mean uh, the younger uh, authors should uh, ask for, uh, for help, uh, just to uh, send uh, a paper to any yeah, experience. Uh, sorry, uh, I'm not happy, I'm not uh, Familiar, what's happened? I, I, I see you, but sorry, no, forgotten. <laughs> no, Miroslav, we can we can hear you very clearly, and I'm sure we'll take your uh, as well. Mm -hmm. So, uh, just uh, the the f the first run is to to ask for help from uh, experienced uh, colleagues. Uh, I mean, uh, especially for uh, English improvement. Uh, my first, let me say, paper was really bad, but I really get got uh, good, uh, let me say, help from uh, from others. Uh, so, so it is necessary to remember the quality of the journal is uh, in both hands, editorial and board and uh, authors. Uh, however, uh, we need to pay attention for younger because uh, they simply need to, uh, let me say, uh, learning. <laughs> Uh, and, and this is a task also for associated uh, editor. Uh, sorry, th that's that's only like comments. <laughs> may, I, may I comment on this? Uh, yes, so yes please. This, this is quite uh, quite important point. And I think if we have many authors, I I, I sometimes observe a situation where uh, there are like you know six authors, a distinguished professor, and uh, the corresponding author is just. Uh, young doctor and those professor those professors they do nothing they receive a revised version they receive the review and they do nothing and especially when they receive uh, galley proofs they also do nothing so in some countries there is such a tradition that young doctors must do everything and those professors they just give their name uh, it shouldn't be like this it's it's uh, it's not about turkey but um, th there are some countries which uh, have this tradition. <laughs> so uh, we actually, we should contribute, uh, everybody should contribute to the quality and everybody, all co-authors should like verify the text. 
because this is a nature of human perception that, you know, even I am the best, I read this five times and I cannot see the, see the, the error, uh, obvious, obvious mistakes. And I need my colleague and he actually just uh, looks very quickly and he, he can see the, the error, the problem. Eva, do you have a question about the crew? Yes, hello. Um, sorry, I just wanted to comment on, on the question that was just said about the uh, younger and more senior authors, but apparently it's not the way in all the countries, but like in, in, in Belgium, the, the last author is uh, most of the time a senior professor. Um, and yeah, in my experience, he always helps out in fine tuning and the uh, English language. So it's here in Belgium, not often that it is a whole list of co-authors that are only young scientists, but that's apparently not in all countries. And then second, I just, I'm not only focusing on the younger ones, because I also have experienced that the more experienced uh, publishers sometimes are really fixed in their in more old fashioned techniques maybe. And it's also worthwhile to see whether they're not stuck into they're not using the most state-of-the-art techniques. So that's why I also focus on more older um, scientists as well for revising thoroughly. It's just a comment that I wanted to make. <laughs> Thank you. I think that's all. Uh, last, eventually, uh, we are at the end. I should say, say big thanks to Dr. Tefik Jehan. Can you switch on your camera, Tefik? Uh, this uh, organization wouldn't have been uh, possible if he was not here with us. He supported all this uh, technical organization. I'm very bad about this, actually. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much, Tefik. Thank, you, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Wojtek Piaseczki and all participants. Thanks a lot. See you next time physically. We want to host uh, Professor Dr. Wojtek Piaseczki in Turkey in our faculty again, if the uh, pandemic uh, permits us. Thank you. Thank you very much, and I really appreciate that my colleague from the journal, associate editors, also joined us and commented helped me to uh, develop my my thoughts uh, thank deep. You. okay thank you bye 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 thank you very much for